Well, that was a bit chaotic, wasn't it? Now before we get started, just so you know, there is a little giveaway at some point during this vlog. Don't skip to the end, it's not there and it's not going to be right at the beginning either. Just watch it all and enter the competition. Are you lucky? We're back for another vlog. This time we are up at the Norton Disney Day Ticket Complex, one of the first Embryo Day Ticket Complex in fact. Six lakes to choose from, but on this trip, I've not really got them to choose from because I've been set a ridiculous challenge. Well, hello mate. Not ridiculous, but we've got 48 hours and the target I've been set is to catch from every single lake on the complex. Now. Any challenge has got to have a couple of key features. A, it's got to be achievable, which it definitely is, but B, it's also got to be a challenge. It can't just be a walk in the park. So um, I'm looking forward to it. A little bit apprehensive, because you know, some of these lakes, they're not, a, they're not a pushover. We're gonna have to work at getting by it. So the first thing I'm gonna do, rather than just pick a lake and start fishing, I'm gonna have a little walk around and see if I can see something show on one of the lakes and try and hit the ground running and tick one of the lakes off as quickly as possible. So, little walk round, load up the barra, take the, the dog with me as well, Gizmo's here for the trip. See if we can catch some fish, mate. Yeah, come on in. Well, I'm stood on Pettit's Lake, which is arguably one of the tougher ones on the complex. Less carp per acre than I think probably all of the others. About 250, 260 carp in here. Loads of 30 pounders. And I think the average is sort of 26 pound and growing. It's gonna, it's already a special place, but the way it's going from strength to strength, once it's back open, they've had, They've been shut for so long, getting loads of work, and you probably hear the noise going on now. There's water being pumped into this one to get it back up to level. There's been a big snag removal process across all the lakes that's been happening whilst we've been in lockdown and, and now, still, still going now. But I've seen fish. And people often ask me when they're referring to somewhere like Linear, maybe they're heading up to the complex, which lake should I go on? My answer is always the same. If you can get on showing fish or actively feeding fish, no matter what lake they're on, that's where I'd want to be setting up. So I sort of envisage that this is where I'd be sat for the night, and it still might be, but the fact I've seen two shows really quickly and not too much water, I reckon a couple of well-positioned solid bags could be our starting point. In fact, it is going to be our starting point. Right, I'm gonna try and keep kit to as a, a minimum level as possible. I'm not gonna take the bivy yet, not gonna take the bed chair. Could be traveling around. If I can nick one quickly here, I wanna be very quickly off to the next lake. So just to bare essentials, and then when I decide on where I'm doing the night, I'll come back and grab the other bits. watching this thinking oh he's underprepared again and I suppose I am a little bit but 
all of my fishing lately has been on my syndicate, it's been on Northwick. Um, and I have got a couple of solid bags already done, but they've got barbed hooks on, and it's a barbless hook only, not even a crushed barb at Norton Disney, so uh, I'm having to tie up fresh rigs. So I'm taking that as a defense. I've not had much time to sit down and tie up a load of rigs, but it doesn't take too long. Pretty soon, I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a couple of solid bags out there, because they've, they've got sort of maximum attraction, just one cast, I'm not gonna put any loose bait around it. I'm just gonna try and nick one. And the other way I like nicking them at this time of year, it's just a single yellow pop-up on a spinner rig. So I think I'll have a couple of solids out. My dog's attacking someone. By attacking, I mean making a load of noise and he's probably gonna lick him to death. But let's see if we can let's see if we can tick off one of the tricky lakes really early. We're on the fish, which is always important. They're still showing behind me. I still fancy doing the nights on here though, because it's the best chance of a 30 pounder. I know it's greedy, but greed is good. Now I've got to be careful here because I know what I'm like. It's not every day you turn up to Pettit's and get quick bites, trust me. I've got to make sure I actually move now. I can't happily sit here all day. Got to get it in first. He's just nicked in the bottom lip. Come on, get in. Oh, what a start. Like I said, this very easily could have been, well, it is, it's one of the hardest, it is the hardest lake on the complex, not one of. There's less carp in here than anywhere. And we've got one. Despite what I said about not getting carried away, it's gonna take a little bit of time to sort this out. So uh, I've got another solid bag tied up. I'm gonna walk it back round before we have a look at it. Yes! Well, not even managed to have a look at the first fish yet. I said I wanted to get another rig back in position as quickly as possible. Had another solid tied up, dropped it in the same sort of zone, and it's away again. I'm not gonna ham anything up though. I'm in a very privileged position here. The wind is now pushing into this corner. There's pumps flooding fresh water into the lake, which the fish absolutely love. So uh, whilst I'm in a, a lucky set of unique circumstances, you still got to make the most of it, ain't you?
as much as this is paining me, this is the third bite, but I'm not going to recast the rod. I'm going to get sidetracked into just trying to fish for a Pettit's big one, and that's not the challenge. I've not been told to come to Pettit's and catch as many as you can. I've been told to come to Norton Disney and catch them every lake. So get this one in, we'll have a nice little photo shoot with, hopefully if we land this one, with three fish, and then we're going to be on our toes and um, go and find some carp on one of the other lakes. But I might come back here for the night. I just actually said to Lewis, who shoots all of the vlogs and edits them, may I add, shouldn't do it now to put pressure on myself but I'm gonna leave here after this and I said we're gonna catch a 30 pounder out of here because this is a unique opportunity now I didn't have to tell you that I could have kept that to myself but I'm feeling confident we're on a good roll with these vlogs good things have been happening I'm convinced we're gonna get a good one Now I can say it. When your name's on it, it's on it. That is outrageous. Right, you ready, Lou? Yeah. Now you're gonna you're gonna be the reader. I'm saying he's 26 pound all day long, but you get to be the the revealer. Uh, 20, 25, 25.4. I said 26. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that will douse your start. That is why you ever go on pet. It's, it ain't the easiest on the on the complex, but. The planets have aligned and I've, I've got it sort of lined up here. The fish are well and truly stacked up in this corner. I don't care what happens for the rest of the challenge. I want to complete it, but that 25 and a quarter, one of the best mirrors I have ever caught. Oh, blown away by it, what a start. I've got another couple in the net to show you. One of them I think is pretty sure is bigger than this, but it ain't gonna be any comparison. Look at it. Just a smidge over 28 pounds. I don't want to move, but I've got to. Well, couldn't really ask for a much better start. Three hours in. I've had a 25-4 banging scaly, followed by a 24-4, and then this one tipping the scales to just over 28 pound. I really don't want to move on, but I've got to. So I think next step, I'm going to go and have a little look at Turners and Hodgetts because they back onto each other. Hopefully find some fish, but until then, let's just have a, one last look at him. Oh, 
Well, I'm not gonna lie, I was hoping to get into a slightly closer swim to the last lake, but as you'll be able to see, this lake is very busy. Just about every swim's taken. Um, but I'm round on the far side of turn, and in front of here, I know, I remember, that there used to be a load of snags that have been removed. So I'm hoping that fish are still held up in this zone. I have already seen one. Um, weather's not ideal though. It took 15 minutes to walk here with a loaded barrow. And I plan to go back there tonight to fish for the night. I could have driven around, there's a car park there. Thought I'd be all, all like big carp again and do the whole thing on the barra. Already regretting it. Already thinking about walking back round. And now I've got to try and get solid bags out. Well, whilst I'm under here trying to uh, get some solid bags done out of the rain, my dog thinks that the medium cool bag is also a, well, a, a dog bed, I guess. It can't be that comfy. Is it comfy? Are you happy? If you're happy, I'm happy. Get your dog beds here. Well, you thought you'd seen it all on Masterclass when you saw the uh, the umbrella hat. Now we have the uh, the umbrella rucksack man. Lewis, talk to me. How, how dry is it under there? It's not very dry, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've had a genius idea right after I got soaked, so. Well, mate, what an idea. I'm about to try and tie a solid bag, but um, you're, you're looking sick, mate. You're looking sick. There you go. really say this is like a bite out of the blue because I've been seeing fish all over the zone but just had a single bleep and as I looked at the rod it just literally pulled around like a quiver tip and it ain't stopped running since I'm gaining on it now but the nice thing is where the complex has been shut they've done so much work on it draining all the lakes down they've removed all the snags from the lake so even though it took a lot of line I haven't got to worry too much I can just be patient and now pump him all the way back in. It's definitely bigger than mid double, so we have a tick. Oh, it's Turner's late. Nineteen ten. Turner's Lake is done. And what we're gonna try and do, I said I wanted to try and do the nights back on Pettit, so I'm gonna get this fish back, get reeled in, and get on my toes to the next lake.
Next logical step is to drop on Hodgetts because I've only just packed up from behind me on Turners. And already I've just seen a, a little swirl down here and some definite fizzing down here. So I'm not, not one for dropping into the first swim I, I sort of come across, but yeah, there's something there. But there's bits going on, there's some more fizzing. Yep, that'll do me. The aim of the game so far, and will continue to be, is trying to get the quickest bites possible. Solid bag is the ultimate for that. There's not too much bait, there's a little parcel of attraction, and then finally I'm getting to play with the new goose. This one is what I've actually had all the bites on so far, the moonshine. Just a little injection, it's, it looks loads, but it really isn't. And that now, sitting down on the bottom, a, they can't help but find it. And when that starts to break down, even after such a short amount of time, all you've really got down is my little yellow isotonic hook bait waving amongst it, engulf the whole lot, and away you go. So, um, I'm gonna get this back out there, or back out on this lake, or get it out on this lake even. I've seen so much fizzing down this left-hand side. I've already put one down there. I'm gonna follow this one down there as well. Give it a little while, see what happens bring the changes if we need to. There's a few fish showing, they're active. I hate being too confident, but I think this is a lake we can get ticked off really quickly. Because <laughs> the others are taking ages, like that one took nearly two hours. Getting greedy now. Right, a last quick roll of the dice on here. There's not much happening here. There's the odd little liner, the odd bit of bubbling. But over that side, literally opposite where I am, I keep seeing fish roll. So um, there's a couple of hours of daylight left yet. I'm gonna give it a go around there for 45 minutes to an hour. There's so many carp in here. I think if we can land on a load of them, we can get a real quick bite. So we'll give it a go get moved round, last gasp attempt before getting them out for the night back on pets. You don't want to see all me moving and reeling all that, do you? You want to see me round there, so this is the power of the vlog. Just like that, three rods are out. Much easier on the vlog. He looks lovely. He's not even a double. I'm trying to show you off to the camera and you can swim back with your with your mates. There we go. Okay, so we have we have caught from free. Not the size from this one that we're after. Well, look at him. He's not big, but what he lacks in size for now, he certainly makes up in beauty. See you, mate. Mwah.
time to go and fish for the big boys again. Let's get back on pettits. I've promised you a 30 pounder. Norton Disney is all up in the air. I've just struggled for hours on arguably the easy lake. I've come back onto the tricky lake. I've not even got my third rod out and we're away. Could be a long old night. Hey Lou. <laughs> Still at least you ain't been up early. What time are you up Lou? About half two. Half two? Where do you live? Like Heathrow Way. You, you actually said to me, Lewis, I'm getting there for six. I didn't, I said seven. You're such a... <laughs> I said I'm leaving at half, I said I'm leaving at four, and I said it's two and a half, three hours. No, 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 no. Hundred percent. Hundred percent, I mate. thought you were anyway, here. Anyway, right, let, let's just, let's just film this. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> First bite on the jungle juice. What number is this hill? Uh, well, it's three since we've been back. Boy. Come on, boy. In you go, boy. Yep, yep, yep. It's looking like it could be a really busy night so rather than trying to give you loads of little updates now as it happens all right it's better if we catch up over a cup of tea in the morning see you then Where did we start? Uh, I think I had four fish sort of just after dark last night after coming back onto the lake. It was a 19, a 23, 26 and a 27. Got up early this morning to redo the rods because I did have a bit of sleep. And I've already got two in the net of which both are over 20 pound and another one on. Uh, it, it's crazy. Quite tired, but loving life. Well, there's a few new goos coming out imminently and I'll be honest 
other than the bubble gum one, which I've I've used on my hook baits, I've not not used the other two very much. But I decided to give them a proper go this trip. <laughs> so far, suitably impressed. This has got to be it. Oh yeah. That is 31. Get in. Well, I said we'd have a catch up over a brew, but instead, let's have a catch up over something I thought could happen. A 31 pound common. What has happened since coming back on here from, from the other lake yesterday evening that can only be described as slightly organized chaos. This is fish number nine, so that's 12 fish out of pets in total. All the others bar one have been over 20 pound as well. But this is without doubt the icing on top of the cake. Do you know what, I think there's more to come. Craziness. decided to drop in on Stocks Lake next. I was having a walk around, gonna maybe head to Holden's. I think that's gonna be the real tricky one out of what's left. But when I got to one of these corners on Stocks, it was just full of fish, so I couldn't resist temptation. I need to catch one from here. So this swim gives me uh, the perfect angle, the perfect cast to get down into that zone. So I've got a solid bag down there. I've got another one down to me left because I keep patrolling this close margin. And then just that in front where it's really quite deep i have just put an adjustable zig um three foot under the surface at the minute there's about 370 odd carp in here though lots of 20 pounders already uh, this one's never actually been open to the public yet it's the newest one on the complex but i think it's soon to become one of the very very popular ones the fish are growing really quickly packing on the weight i did fish it once a, probably about a month ago just do a little bit of test fishing with a friend just for a night um, and had half a dozen fish, including a couple of 20 pounders. So yet another one that's gonna be an amazing venue for the future. Just hope I can catch one quickly. seeing fishing close but first bite it's actually the zig that's gone it's only a small one but it is a bite
small one. Yeah, look. Jesus. <laughs> he could not have swam a worse way if you tried. Literally came in like a dart. I've never seen that before. Well, look, a couple of beautiful little carp. They're not quite, all right, Giz. I'll go this way, shall I? They're not quite the mid-double that we were, we were trying to catch, but time is ticking. <laughs> Giz, go over here. <laughs> He's literally <laughs> right in the lens. <laughs> Due to me being a bit too keen and going back on pettits for the night, time is ticking, so back you go. Thank you very much. Let's have a look at you. Another linear. They are proper, proper lovely carp. Thank you, mate. Mwah. Time for billies. That would be a dream come true. Right, well welcome to Billy's Lake. It feels quite weird being around this side because I reckon for over a year it's actually been underwater. But I've seen lots of fish here. I actually stopped in the swim next door because there were so many on the surface. They looked sure, uh, surefire to take some mixers, but um, no, didn't show. But the odd one took, but need a bit more competition for that. So I've come here, shallow water. They're, they're, they're already here. A couple of solid bags out here, maybe an adjustable zig out amongst those fish. Just want to nick one. That's all I need to do, and I want to do it as quickly as possible. And as if this trip couldn't get any better, we've had a load of lovely carp topped by a mega 31 pound common. And on top of all that, Rob Burgess has turned up. He's here for a few days, so he's, uh, he's not gonna fish tonight. He's gonna get himself set, and he's gonna come round mine later for a little barbecue. Nice to have a catch up. Anyway, kinda get some rods out. I mentioned that my old mate Rob Burgess was here. And I've just watched him three times struggle to walk down there to so a little Instagram story. Sound has not been great. Aeroplane, then a lorry or something. On his third time, I thought it only right that I shouted out to put him off. He's furious. <laughs> he'll be all right, he'll go over it. sat here enjoying a bit of heat in the day. I've put a couple out on the bottom. And I put one out on an adjustable zig amongst some fish. I started at a foot under and nothing. And about 10 minutes ago, maybe, yeah, about 10 minutes ago, I put it down to two foot under. So still right up in the upper layers. And just a few little clicks and we're in. Well, there we go. He's probably 16 or 17 pound, but more importantly, it's another lake done. On to the last. Mwah. Right, 
right, this lake, Holden's, stands between me and completing the challenge. Whatever happens, it's been a wicked trip, but don't let that fool you. If I don't catch one from here, I am gonna leave disappointed. But I've got history with this. I fished it about a month ago, did 24 hours and didn't so much see a carp, let alone catch one or even have a bleep. But I've already been greeted by a few fish milling around the edge. They're definitely out on top, so dog biscuits, adjustable zig, extreme margins with solid bags, maybe a bit of the house pellet thrown over the top. That's gonna be the approach. Fingers crossed, it doesn't beat me up again. Come on Holdens, peg one, be good to me. I've literally had the rods out for 10 minutes and the right hand rod, a little solid bag down the shelf has just busted off. This is it, land this, challenge completed. How do you, um, being of the, of the ginger persuasion, how do you find the heat? Awful. <laughs> oh. I knew it was too good to be true. No. Things foul looked. No, no, no. It was there. You have just broken me. Just, just for those that aren't aware. Now, I'm sure most of you watching this are carp anglers, but there might be some that aren't, or there might not be some, there might be some that don't really know the etiquette, but unless you hook a carp in his mouth where he's actually been feeding on your baited rig, we don't count them, and he is unfortunately, he was hooked just in the base of his gill plate, so, um, so near. So far away. Sorry, mate. It's like, I'm sorry, I'm fuming, but you know, back you go. Who are you apologising to? The carp or me? Okay. I thought I was about to have a cup of tea, but. I care about you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna try and raise my spirits a little bit and yours hopefully. That fish hurt, I'm not gonna lie. But let's, uh, let's try and cheer everybody up. It's competition time. If you would like to be in with a chance to win a bottle of each of the new goos, plus an infuser so that you can use it to boost your hook baits and a nice new bucket for it all to go in, all you gotta do is make sure that you subscribe to the Corda YouTube channel and put a comment about the blog below. Cheers. Well, it's the same rod again. I made a really weird noise. Did you hear that? That was weird. Um, same rod again. <laughs> I'm just hoping this one's hooked fairly, and I'm hoping it's mid double plus. Actually, not been back. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened, Lou? <laughs>
<laughs> only, only be one of them weird fly things. They're the most docile creatures in the world, and you reacted like it was a. Mate, Anaconda. it could have been anything. Right, Look like what? Get back to the chat. What could it have been in this country that could cause that reaction? <laughs> a bee. I'll give you that. A bee or a wasp. Thank you. So there's, but it there's wasn't something. that, was it? It could have been. Right. It's mid-May. Back end of May. And we've only anyway. just now got the sun. Yeah, anyway, back to your chat. You looks like you've been in the sun all day. You're very red. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to the chat. Anyway, same rod again. Praying that it's not foul look. I mean, that's pretty unlucky you're on a solid bag you you sometimes expect it on a zig when you've got a rig right up in the water column expects the wrong word but it's a a relatively common occurrence solid bag on the deck with a little wafter almost unheard of so hopefully this one is hooked fair and square it's over 15 pound would be lovely but either way Let's face it, we haven't caught 15 pounders from every lake, but it will be. I'll, I'll be pleased, I'll leave pleased to have caught from all lakes. I know it's. Uh, I'm very fortunate to be able to do it like this because there's not many people fishing because there's lots of work going on and it's not properly open yet. So I'm not trying to say I've done anything miraculous because I've, I haven't. I've just been hard working and moving around a lot to make it happen, but I'll still leave, I'll still leave very pleased. Ironically, the way I've fished here is not how I would ever fish these lakes. When I've fished them before, like Pettits, um, Billies, Stocks, it's always been, you know, you, you sort of build your, your spot up, you put a bit of bait out and you start catching and you're constantly topping them up and you, you sort of work a spot. But because I've just been trying to nick them, I felt that might take too long, and that's why I'm fishing with solids, zigs, singles. Please come in. Is this challenge complete? Come on, mate. Come on. Lift that net. Yes! Yes! Finishing the challenge with a 20 pound 10 ounce. That will do lovely. Well, that is the perfect end to the challenge. Last lake ticked off at Norton Disney, 20 pound 10. Well, happy. It's, it's been hard work. It's been a very little sleep and hard graft, but it's all been worth it. But that's not quite the end yet. Got a nice little barbecue to look forward to, and now the pressure's off, I can properly enjoy it. Stills. Thank you, mate. Fishing can be a funny old thing sometimes, can't it? I, uh, the first night on here and the first morning on here, I could literally barely keep a rod in the water. So I did everything in my power yesterday to race around the complex to get the remaining lakes ticked off so that the challenge was complete. But the whole time I was thinking, I want to get back on pettits. 12 bites I had in not many hours fishing when you actually add the hours up. 
and I thought it was a given that back in the same area, pump back on again, it was gonna happen. Well, it didn't. I had one liner. I did have a good night's sleep, which I needed. Um, that's it though, nothing else to report. It, it, that's the way it goes sometimes. There was a new wind pop up yesterday. I think the fish have followed it out of the zone. And like I say, catching 12 fish from a relatively confined area in such a short space of time might have been too much for them, so they might have backed off the angling pressure anyway. But still very happy to, um, to leave Norton with a big old tick. I do want to come back and show you how I approach maybe just one venue at a time on here, because it's very different to what I've done but that's for future. On to a slightly more sobering subject, I think, but something that's very important to speak about. You may have seen it over on the, uh, the Corder social media pages about the very sad news of a lady called Lauren Bickett, who unfortunately took her own life very, very recently. Now, she was a friend of Corder's. Uh, she'd entered the Winter Hero competition. Again, you may have seen that with some, with some lovely carp that she was very, very proud of catching. And Jordan, her boyfriend, got in touch with us when, uh, with, with the sad news that she'd passed away. Now what Jordan's doing to help try and raise awareness for mental illness, he's working in conjunction, I think, with the Mind Charity, one of many charities out there uh, that help that, what, what still is a taboo subject when it really shouldn't be surrounding mental illness. I'm certainly no expert on it, but... I think there's a lot of people out there that behind closed doors, they wear a very, very brave smile on their face, but you really don't know what's going on. So if you're sitting there now and you've got friends that you haven't heard from in a long time, uh, people that you, you may even know are, are suffering, then pick up the phone, give them a call, send them a text message, just try to get in touch, try to talk somebody. It, it's a slogan that's been going around in recent times, but it really is okay to not be okay. If you feel uh, if you feel you need to talk to somebody, then reach out, speak to someone. There's a lot of people that are willing to listen. Um, and it's important that we, we don't shy away from this sort of subject. It's important that we embrace it and do everything we can to try and help somebody. So this episode of the vlog is dedicated to Lauren. Our thoughts with her and her family are what an obvious obviously a very very tricky time they've set up a gofundme page to help support mental awareness so if you can give anything no matter how small then please do thank you I say carp fishing can be funny sometimes. Told you I'd seen nothing, heard nothing. Then out of the blue, I've just had a bite. So either they've just turned up or there simply ain't as many in front of me. But whatever happens, it'll be a lovely way to sign off. Well, how about that for a perfect ending? I thought it all it was all over, then out of the blue, 26 and a half pound. And another reason why if you haven't been to Norton Disney yet, you need to get here soon. Thanks for watching episode six of the vlog. I don't know where the time goes. Like and subscribe. And if you haven't seen the others, catch up. They're all available on YouTube. Cheers.